Salutations respected viewers, this is George from Ireland. This video is about the British royal family. Um, they're the most high profile royal family in the world. There are over 30 royal families of, of sovereign states, six of them in the European Union, that's including the United Kingdom. There are a few in the Middle East, um, a few in the Far East. Um, there are nine in Malaysia, the only one actually rules Malaysia. There are a couple of uh, in Africa, one in Japan, none of the American continent. Anyway, so the surname of the British royal family is Windsor, because that is said to be their favourite castle, the oldest inhabited castle in the world. It's 25 miles west of London. Windsor is a town well known these days because it's in uh, St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle that Prince Harry wed Miss Meghan Markle. Um, but Windsor has only been the surname of the British royal family since 1917. Up until then, it was Saxe Coburg Goethe, um, but uh, they um, changed it because of the First World War, because of Teutonophobia uh, in the United Kingdom. So uh, the British royal family has only existed in a sense in 1707, because prior to then, I suppose there were a few, there were separate kingdoms. Ireland, we were a separate kingdom from England and Wales until 1801. Scotland and England were separate from each other until 1707. So even though it was the same monarch, since um, 1603 ruled Ireland, Scotland and England and indeed Wales, um, there were separate crowns. Going back in history, Ireland and England, we've had the same monarch since ooh, 1171. Admittedly, Ireland, it wasn't, it wasn't a king for much of that time, it was a lord of Ireland. Uh, anyway, so the current surname is Windsor, but the Queen's husband, his name is um, von Sonderburg Glucksburg und von Schleswig-Holstein, as in he's a Greek prince. Greece became independent um, in 1830. They got a Bavarian princeling for a while, didn't like him, booted him out. Then they got a uh, uh, younger son of the King of Denmark to came over, come over. So the Greek royal family is of Danish origin, but the monarchy was abolished in Greece in um, 1967. It's never gone back. The thing is, um, they're always into marrying. So in the old days, people were very status conscious and societies were wildly inegalitarian. A prince would marry a princess most of the time, if not a noblewoman, as in someone whose father had a hereditary title like Duke or Earl or Marquis or Baron. Often they're called Lord, whether they're a, a Baron or a Viscount or an Earl or a Marquis. There's several ranks of noble titles of hereditary titles. Like most men, my title is plain mister, but there are other higher hereditary titles. Um, anyway, so but the, the, the royal family have not used Prince Philip's surname, their, their surname is still Windsor. Some people say it's Mountbatten Windsor, because Prince Philip, his um, maternal uncle, was Mountbatten. He was very close to that, so Mountbatten Windsor, but they're always known as Windsor. And even Mount Batten, that was uh, Britannicized in the First World War, was really Battenberg. So yes, the British royal family have considerable German ancestry, but they've married into every royal household there is in Europe, and they're all a complete mix and gather them. I mean, Prince Philip is said to consider his nationality to be European. So um, Her Britannic Majesty would have British and French and Spanish and Russian and Greek and Swedish and Norwegian and Danish and whatever sort of ancestry. And of course, bear in mind, these countries didn't exist as unitary states until quite recently, like Germany wasn't united until 1971. And from the 40s to the 90s, remember, it was split into two. Um, OK, so uh, Her Britannic Majesty, she is the monarch of 16 uh, sovereign states around the world. I can't remember them all, certainly not in order, but like Australia, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, um, the Bahamas. Canada, um, New Zealand, the Solomon Islands, um, uh, and on and on, Grenada. So these are these are Commonwealth realms. She's the queen of those countries. It's correct to call her the queen of Jamaica. Yeah, it'd be correct to call her um, the uh, queen of Barbados. But she's almost never known as that, though she is queen of these countries. The United Kingdom is one realm, the unit of the crowns. Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, England, one kingdom, United Kingdom. So Wales was a principality, it was never a kingdom. And that's why um, Wales doesn't have the, the St David's flag as part of the Union flag. 
Um, so even though she is the Queen of Australia, everybody knows she's much more closely associated with the United Kingdom, where she spends almost all her time, and she's not been to Australia for, for donkey's years. Um, so the British royal family, well, it can be traced back to the House of Wessex, if you could just going to look at England, to Egbert, who in 1802 became King of the West Saxons, that's Wessex, it's really southwest England. But uh, different portions of the United Kingdom, Her Majesty the Queen had, would have ancestors who'd rule Scotland and parts of Scotland, parts of Ireland like Brian Boru, he's an ancestor of hers from the 11th century. So remember England wasn't united as one kingdom, even theoretically, until the, until the 9th century AD. And even the words England and English came were not much older than that. Furthermore, um, they are not even English in origin. The Angles, the Saxons and the Jutes, they invaded uh, what's now England in the 5th century AD, coming over from what we now call Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark. Um, Jutland is the major part of, of, of Denmark, the land part of it, or Jylland in the Danish tongue. And you may have heard of the German states, Saxony, Lower Saxony, which is the one by the sea, and Saxon Anhalt. They're all in a diagonal line. So the Saxons sailed over from there, landed in England. The Angles from what we now call the Netherlands. Anyway, the Venerable Bede, that monk um, from Jarrow, he uh, wrote his history of the English church. And he's the one who invented English and England uh, in the 8th century AD. So he took Anglo-Saxon and went with the Anglo bit. Had he gone with the Saxon bit, people would have been Saxonish and the, land, the country would have been Saxon land. Indeed, in Irish, we call uh, um, England Shashana, as in Saxony, the people of Saxons. Even speaking in, in, in English, Irish people sometimes call the English Saxons. Likewise, in, in, in Scotland, they sometimes say Sassanach, even though they are speaking English to mean the English, or the Welsh, calling them Sais, as in Saxons. Um, so that's a fascinating thing, the way the word English and England, these words, they're not English in origin. And um, England only rep uh, referred to a bit of Eastern England. We now call East, Engl East Anglia, Cambridgeshire, Norfolk, Suffolk, um, and so on, uh, Essex. And West Anglia, which would be Northamptonshire, Lincolnshire, and I can't think wherever, maybe Leicestershire, East Anglia and West Anglia. So England only referred to about a fifth of what is now England. And it's scintillating to wait to see the way the uh, meaning of words I I evolves. So the signification has changed. That's England proper. A bit like in Sweden, a Sweden proper. There was only a small part of, of, of Sweden which was originally meant to be Sweden. You know, so countries wax and wane. Like Denmark's territories ebbed and flowed, and southern Sweden was part of Denmark if one goes back uh, many centuries. So I looked up her Britannic Majesty's uh, family tree, and obviously she's related to um, every royal household in Europe you could think of. And others are almost all of, of armorial rank, as to say they have uh, had a hereditary title, would have a, a coat of arms. And one has to go back many generations to find somebody who's a plain miss in her. Um, in her ancestry. So it's um, 45 generations since um, uh, they've come to rule England, um, possibly more since Scotland, depending which bit you trace them to. So they, they're descended from all sorts. I remember reading, meeting a Scots separatist just before the vote of the, on, on separation in Scotland. You can't call it independence since there is no independence within the European Union. It's an oxymoron. And he's saying, why should we honour their queen when, when, when they killed ours? What an ignoramus, as she's most certainly the Queen of the United Kingdom, which includes Scotland. Um, and uh, Her Britannic Majesty is d d descended from Mary Queen of Scots. It was to Mary Queen of Scots to whom this chap was alluding. And she's not descended from Elizabeth I, because Elizabeth of that name, the first, uh, had no offspring, the Virgin Queen. So the official residence of um, the House of Windsor is St. James's Palace. There's this um, uh, common misconception that uh, it's Buckingham Palace, it's not. Buckingham Palace is much larger and more stately, and many official ceremonies uh, are held there, but that it is not their official residence. So they've all got many royal residences around. Windsor Castle, which I've already mentioned, Lancaster House, Clarence House, and Marlborough House, they're all lined up with St. James's Palace mm -hmm. along um, Pall Mall in London. But the Marlborough House, where Her Majesty the Queen's grandmother, Mary of Teck, died, that's lent to the Commonwealth as their headquarters. Mary of Teck being a Germanic princess. She, uh, her father was the Grand Duke of Teck. So he's not from the, the imperial family of Germany, not from the House of Hohenzollern. 
um, and she died there in 1953, shortly before Her Britannic Majesty's coronation. And um, May, Mary of Tech had said that were she to die, as seemed probable, she was almost 80 and a heavy smoker, that the coronation should not be delayed. Clarence House. So um, it was, uh, that's another one there, built for the Prince Regent, and the Queen Mother lived there, now Prince of Wales lives there. Lancaster House used for diplomatic reception, so she lends out many of the residents to the government for other purposes. There's Kensington Palace, much of which is open to the public, and much of which was devoted to apartments, and she promised some of her um, in-laws and relatives they would have free um, accommodation for life. For example, Prince Michael of Kent and his wife, Princess Michael, although her name is actually Maria Christina von Reibnitz, but she's known as Princess Michael because she wasn't born a princess. Therefore, you, you shouldn't use her Christian name after princess. A bit like Meghan Markle was actually Princess Harry. Okay, because she was not born a princess. I know in common parlance we call her Princess Meghan. It would really perplex people. But strictly speaking, that's wrong. Princess Kate, as in Kate Middleton, that's wrong. Actually, she's Princess William, taking her husband's Christian name after the princess. I know it seems ridiculous, but that's the way you're going to do it if you're speaking strictly. Um, there's Hillsborough Castle in Northern Ireland, her official re residence there, where is the Northern Ireland Secretary lives. It's very close to Stormont. And um, Holyrood House in Scotland, there may be others as well. I can't think where it is in Wales, possibly Carnarvon Castle, where the Prince of Wales had his investiture. Because the eldest son of the monarch is Prince of Wales. Not automatically they get, they get invested, as in they get inaugurated at some point. And they have private residences like Gatcombe Park, which Princess Anne owns, or Sandringham in Norfolk, which they've owned for well over a century. That's where George VI died. Highgrove, Prince of Wales' private residence in, in, in Gloucestershire. He purchased it very close to his paramour, Mrs Camilla Parker Bowles, way back in 1978, before he even met Princess Diana in a serious way. Balmoral, their private residence in Scotland, which they bought, well, Prince Albert bought just before he died, and um, Princess Queen Victoria used to go there. So every August, they're there the whole time, and it's a private residence. They never invite foreign guests there. The Prime Minister goes there for a week. That is a custom since Queen Victoria's time to spend it with the uh, monarch. So that's a little bit about the British royal family.